I'm Dr. Michael Detola. And I'm Megan Strong. Put down the handpiece. It's time for Chairside Live. Welcome to Chairside Live. Megan, how are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. This week we've got an interesting case of the week for you. This is something that I had heard about for years but never actually seen. A doctor prepped a second molar and then took an impression with a double arch tray. And something that I always heard could happen with this, we can actually see it happen. So it's a very fascinating case about what happens when we prep the most distal tooth in an arch and then use a double arch impression technique. But before we look at that, let's go to Megan in the news. We hear all the time to brush and floss often, at least twice a day, but could brushing ever be bad for you? Research shows that brushing too soon after acidic meals and drinks can be harmful. Acid attacks the teeth, eroding the enamel and dentin, and brushing can speed up this process because you can actually push the acid deeper into the enamel and dentin. In one study, researchers found that volunteers who brushed their teeth 20 minutes after drinking soda had an increase in dentin loss while there was a considerably less wear when they brushed 30 to 60 minutes afterward. Bottom line, always wait at least 30 minutes to brush after an acidic meal or drink. Well, that's interesting. I've never actually heard a recommendation that you should wait on something like that, but it seems like it's pretty natural to do. Like, I don't know, have you ever brushed your teeth after orange juice? Yeah, it doesn't feel right. It's pretty disgusting, mm -hmm. and that's an acidic drink. Can I get the feeling that most people drinking like acidic soft drinks wouldn't run right out and brush their teeth afterwards as well? So good advice, but I don't think there's a lot of people hopefully violating that rule. Anything else? Yes. Researchers at Princeton University have created a way to etch a removable tattoo onto a tooth to monitor chemicals in the breath. The information is then sent to a nearby device for analysis. The tattoo is made of silk from cocoon threads and gold wires thinner than a spider's web that adhere naturally to tooth enamel. The tattoo sticks to the tooth by pressing it against it and adding water. One example of how this works is in the detecting of the presence of ketones in the breath, which signal the onset of juvenile diabetes. To date, the sensor is capable of recognizing thousands of chemicals in the air. According to the researchers, the tattoo could eventually monitor a patient's health with unprecedented sensitivity. I feel like there may be an application there for periodontal disease. You know, one of the main signs uh, of periodontal disease is bad breath. Sure. And uh, it's always amazing to me how I'll, I'll meet a patient who's got bad breath and they don't know it. And, and I'm this far away from them and I can smell it. And, and their mouth is here and their nose is here and, and they can't tell it. So I think you become immune to your own odors. At least I'll, I'll say that for males. Most of these have been male patients. So I think there might actually be an application uh, for periodontal disease to be able to tell a patient quantitatively when they have bad breath instead of it just being the opinion of their wife or girlfriend. All right, thank you, Megan. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the case of the week. On this week's case of the week, I wanted to share an interesting case with you. And it's interesting because this is something that I always heard about, but I had never really seen. Uh, or I could never really point to a model and say, aha, this is where it's happening. So this is a double arch tray impression we got from a dentist for a three unit bridge, which is kind of pushing the technique. We, we really don't like to see three unit bridges and double arch tray impressions. But the interesting part is that the last tooth in the arch has been prepared. And I've always been told that if you're doing a double arch impression technique when the last tooth in the arch has been prepared, there's the possibility that there may be overclosure when the patient bites down into the impression. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this impression and hold it up to the light. And I can see on the anterior teeth that the patient is in fact all the way together. So the patient did achieve maximum intercuspation, but again, I've always been told there's a possibility for overclosure in the posterior when using this technique. So let's look at the models that we poured up from this doctor, from this double arch tray impression. And you can see that they're pretty decent. And as we zoom in on this, you'll notice that we have probably enough room for our Bruxer bridge here on the bicuspid. But as we get closer, we really don't have enough room here between uh, uh, this prepped abutment and the opposing tooth. In fact, you can see they're almost in contact. And that's what prompted our technical support people to call the doctor and say, we need a little more room. In fact, we'd prefer that you send us a full arch impression because this is for a three unit bridge. We wanna make sure we get the excursions right. So the doctor, uh, credit to them, did not uh, complain and took a full arch impression in a metal tray, which I prefer to that plastic double arch tray anyway because of how absolutely rigid it is and how stiff it is. And it allows you to use a light body material and a medium body material if you wish uh, without any putty or without anything really stiff like a heavy body because the tray itself is so stiff. 
And so we see that we've got a nice impression here for the three unit bridge and he, he took a full uh, lower arch impression as well and then a bite registration. And here's the interesting thing. He did not do any more reduction. He just took a new impression for us. And it was interesting to see that when we mounted it, you can see now how much room we have between that distal abutment and the opposing tooth. And it, no additional preparation was done. The only thing that was done differently was that a full arch upper and a full arch lower impression were taken with a bite registration and then mounted on the, on the articulator. And you can see how much more room we have between the molar. In fact, if I bring the other one in here and, and you can take a look at both models at the same time, you'll see that what in fact we are actually seeing is that overclosure in the distal when we're using a double arch tray and prepping the most distal tooth in the arch. So for years at my lecture, I've been saying this and repeating this because uh, I've heard from authorities and known that it happens. This is the first time a case has come across my desk where I saw so clearly the difference between uh, a bridge preparation taken with a double arch technique and with a full upper, full lower, and bite registration. We can now go ahead and proceed with the bridge because of those full arch impressions. Whereas with the double arch tray, because of the overclosure, we thought that the dentist actually needed to prep more. So again, my warning would be always, you know, be careful when you're using a double arch tray and you're prepping the most distal tooth uh, in the arch, especially if it's for a bridge like this. If it's for a bridge, definitely go ahead and take full arch impressions. But even on a single unit, uh, this can happen as well and you may want to verify uh, or just take a separate bite registration so that uh, we're able to make sure that overclosure has not occurred. That about wraps it up for this week's edition of Chairside Live. On behalf of myself, Megan Strong, and everybody here in the lab, I'd like to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time. We all hear all the time to brush and flush... <laughs> that is fantastic. Brush and flush, often at the same time. <laughs> If you're gonna, that's a good point, because if you're gonna spend two minutes yeah. brushing like you right. should, you might as well knock out something else while you're doing it. But before we look at that, let's go to Megan and the news. But we don't have to, we can do something else. <laughs> we hear all the time to brush and flush. I can't, oh my gosh, why? Floss, brush and floss. Please don't brush and flush, okay?